Hey, welcome back to my shop. I can tell you that I'm having a blast with this French cleat playlist we're working on. I can also share with you that I read every single comment on this channel. And without a doubt, there's a ton of interest in French cleats and also a ton of interest in locking French cleats. So today, I'm going to take your comments, your suggestions, your recommendations, and we're going to try those out and see if we can make a workable and usable locking French cleat. So with that said, please stick around. So let me get you acquainted to our experiment. So what we have here is a 24 inch by 12 and 3 quarter inch board. Each section has a two and a half inch cleat mounted to the top and each section has a two inch spacer mounted to the bottom. The cleat and the spacer are the exact same thickness and it's made out of birch plywood. I should also share with you I have three of these two inch uh, pieces of birch plywood that we're going to call the locks and there's one for each section of our, of our experiment. So of all the suggestions that were made about locking a French cleat, I would say the most simplistic one is to actually screw the lock into place after the cleat tool holder is mounted to the wall. So I'm going to use this section of the wall just to do our experiment. And for the ex first experiment, we're going to go ahead and uh, try the screwing lock mechanism. So what I've done for, for the, first, uh, the first attempt here is to is I marked out the distance from the top of our uh, tool holder to the bottom of our wall cleat. And for this example, at least for my, for my tool wall, that's eight inches. For sakes of the video, we'll just call that the screw method. I went ahead and just uh, cut our uh, experiment into three pieces. I thought it might be a little bit more accurate to have three different tool holders and uh, we can demonstrate each method at a time. Plus it's going to be a lot easier um, to add the locking mechanism when they're in smaller pieces. So for the screw method we're just going to simply put our uh, tool holder on the wall. We've got marked out where the bottom of our wall cleat is. And then we're just going to simply add a spacer behind it and then put two screws in, in, the, uh, in the lock. Now I went ahead and counter, uh, I did a countersinking for the screws just to make it look a little bit better. And um, let's try this out. So let's take a little bit closer look at this now that we have the two screws in the lock. I can tell you that the piece is absolutely not going to come off the wall. I mean, unless the board breaks in half or the cleat breaks off of your tool holder, it's not going to come off. Now, I don't love the look of the two screws here um, in the tool holder, but there's certainly some ways that we could hide that in the event that we chose to use this method. Let's say we're going to use this uh, tool holder as a shelf. I mean, it would be pretty simple to go ahead and just put your uh, one of your shelves over those screws. The shelf could be removed. You could take out the screws and then your uh, tool holder could be removed. I think this is certainly a reasonable method for locking your tool holders to the wall. I would say the best part of this method is it's super easy and it doesn't require any fancy tools and it can be done really quickly. Probably the second most common suggestion or recommendation was what we're going to call the wedge method. The wedge method really isn't complicated either. Let me kind of show you the basics of this. So for this method, if this is our tool holder, we essentially have the area on the wall that is touching the wall cleat and that's the first eight inches and I've got that labeled wall cleat and then the next area is where the wedge will be inserted and the third area here is where the wall spacer will be. Now this is the front side of the tool holder 
and this is the side that's facing the wall. So I went ahead and wrapped my marks around for demonstration purposes. So this is where the actual wall cleat is, this is where the wedge is, and this is where the spacer will be. Now, for this demonstration, my wall spacer is actually was actually too too thin or not wide enough. But if I was building a uh, bookshelf or something else, then I would have went ahead and expanded my spacer up to the mark that I have here, leaving room for the wedge to be inserted. So my original spacer was too low and too thin, so I just moved it up for demonstration purposes. But if I was to do this on an actual tool holder, I would make my spacer the entire width between the wedge and the bottom of the tool holder or I might even, if it's a really long tool holder, I might put several spacers in there, but I think you can probably see for demonstration how I did that. Okay, let's go ahead and hang this one on the wall and we can try it out and see if we like it. So you can see we've got the tool holder, we have the tool cleat, the wall cleat, the spacer, and then we have what we're calling the wedge lock. And this is simply just a two inch piece of plywood, birch plywood, just like the same plywood I'm using here, and it just slides right in. Now, my tolerances, tolerances are not real close here. I mean, it's kind of loose. But even being loose, it still cannot come off the wall unless that wedge or that spacer or lock, we call it, is removed. So the third method we're going to call the traditional joinery method. I think you guys will like this one. So what we've got here is we have our third tool holder and this is going to be called the traditional joinery method. The top portion here will be where the wall cleat is. The bottom portion here is the spacer. Really just like before. But the difference in this method is we're going to have an actual wedge here that is added from the side after the tool holder is on the wall and it's going to be shaped like a wedge like in traditional woodworking. So I hope you can see this okay. This is the tool holder facing us, the spacer at the bottom, the wall cleat at the top, and then we're going to have a wedge. Uh, that will be added to the spacer from below and then a second wedge can be added from the side to actually tighten it up against the wall cleat. So just to show you kind of what that looks like is it doesn't really matter the angle here as long as your wedge and your spacer the angle is the same. If I was going to be doing this on a actual uh, tool holder my spacer and my in my uh, tool holder wedge would probably be all the same piece and I would just have that all cut out at the same time. Okay, so let's take a look at this method a little bit closer. It's hanging on the wall. We have our spacer and angled spacer already mounted to the tool holder and then we have our wedge. And we just simply push the wedge in and it immediately tightens up the uh, tool holder to the wall cleat and it's rock solid. I mean, it is not going to come off this wall. I can pull at it as hard as I want. And then to remove it, we would just push from the other side and pop out the wedge. So it inserts in this way and you pop it out this way and then it can simply come right off the wall like that. So let's quickly review our three methods of locking our tool holders to the wall using the French cleat method. The first method uses just two simple screws and a lock from behind. This could be easily done with minimal tools and if your tool um, holders are really close together then you don't have to get to the side to actually add the lock. So for existing tool shelves and things you already have, this might be the method of choice. The second method is really easy. It doesn't require any fancy tools either. And it simply has a wedge or spacer from behind that locks it to the wall. 
it could certainly be tightened up more with a little bit better uh, measuring and, and, and definitely I think that I could get it a lot better if I, if I worked at it. The third method is using a true wedge and we're going to call that the traditional joinery method and it can be uh, mounted to the wall with ease and removed with ease and it tightens up to your wall cleat extremely firmly. I gotta say this is my favorite method. So in closing I presented you three different options for locking your tool holders to your French cleat tool wall. These three methods were inspired by your comments that you left on my videos. The main reason that I was inspired to make this video was number one I know that you guys have a lot of interest in this topic and number two one of my next projects is a plane till. It's going to require holding multiple planes all of which have a lot of value to me. I do not want that to fall off the wall. Know in the comments which one of these methods you like the most and which one you think I should use for the plane till. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video.